In September of last year, I introduced you all to the Modular Coil project and the V1 of the Modular Coil itself. The Modular Coil is a 3D printable modular stator coil that can be employed in a variety of applications from generators to motors and I'm sure people will find other uses for them. Just a week later, I showed off the V2 of the Modular Coil which just goes to show the power and potential and the speed of rapid prototyping enabled by things like 3D printing and free CAD software. The V2 had many improvements over the V1, especially with respect to wire capacity. Today, about half a year later, I am showing off the V3 of the Modular Coil. The V3 is radically different from the previous versions and I look forward to discussing with you guys all the different aspects of that. So without further ado, let's get into the specifics of what I think is the best module coil design yet. This is the V3 of the module coil. And as you can see, it looks very different from the previous versions. Notably, it's red. I printed it in Overture Red PLA, and it actually looks quite good, especially considering that it's printed on a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. I definitely recommend you print this on a smaller nozzle, like a 0.4, in order to capture all of the detail and ensure good print quality. Okay, so let's get straight into talking about features. This is obviously shorter than the previous module coil versions. And this kind of makes sense because it's more electrically efficient. You see, compared to this module coil, the previous versions actually used more wire to achieve the same amount of windings. And that means that in total, the coil itself will have a higher resistance. I thought, well, if I just made the coil shorter, I could have the same amount of turns, but with less wire. And that means that this has much less resistance, and because it has much less resistance, it has a higher power output for the same voltage. With this coil here, I was able to wind 600 turns on it, and I think that's pretty good for its size compared to the other ones which I previously made. Now, I'm not sure of the usefulness of this feature, but the next thing I'd like to talk about is these holes here that I made. And my intention was that in, I, I would make these holes in hopes that it would improve the efficiency of the coil because it would expose the wire more to the rotor. And hopefully that would aid in the performance. I'm not sure how well that's going to turn out. Hopefully we will see when I build a generator out of these. Another thing I'd like to mention is I've completely foregone the idea of using screws and nuts as a ferromagnetic core. What I've instead decided to do is offload all the magnetic boosting to the Hallback array, which proved in the module coil generator project that it was fully capable of doing so. And last but not least, we finally have some cable management. These slots here are for the wire to slot in when the generator is built. And hopefully what that will do is, you know, sort out this mess. But the idea is that when the generator is fully built, and I am connecting all of the crimps together, I can wrap some of the wire around these little holes here, and that will aid in cable management so that my generator doesn't look like a complete mess like the current module coil generator does. Oh, and a couple of other features I forgot to mention. Firstly is the method of fixing the coils to the base of the generator. Basically what I've done is instead of having protrusions that stick into slots on the, on, on the base, what I've instead done now in this iteration 
is you have these holes here that you can just um, screw in the, the coils into the base and that makes these coils able to be much uh, more securely uh, held down inside of the generator. Before in my previous module coil generator a problem I had was that some of the coils were a little bit loose using the slot and protrusion method and so I've instead just gone screw it pardon the pun and made some screw holes so that these can be screwed down onto the base of the generator now and you can't see it here because the coil is wound but I'll just show the model here the core of the coil has this kind of elongated uh, hexagonal shape and my thinking with this was that the vertical part of the wire is the part that's getting affected by the magnets. Any horizontal part of the wire isn't getting affected by the magnets. And so with this elongated hexagon, what you have is you have a vertical active region. You have two you know, vertical active regions of wire. And instead of having a curve at the top and bottom, what you have is you have four diagonal, very, very small diagonal regions, and you have two points. And what that means is that 99% of the wire is at least getting somewhat affected by the magnets in some way and that in theory should improve performance. Anyway, in terms of performance, well, I can't exactly do a formal test right now until I've built the generator. So for now, you'll have to settle for this footage of me wagging some magnets in front of the coil. And as you can see from the DVM, it, it, it works. Um, it's not a real test by any means. I'll have to put it inside a generator in order to try it out fully but yeah it definitely works and here's some footage of me uh, winding the coil it actually winds a lot better than the previous coils probably because it's shorter it's easier to wind and that I guess is also a plus anyway I hope you've enjoyed me talking about the latest iteration of the module coil the STL will, as always, be available on my Thingiverse page. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you all next time. Take care. Bye for now.